This is amazing. Now we have all-in-one embeddings database for semantic search, LLM orchestration, and language model workflows. We can use sparse indexing, dense indexing, graph embedding, and save the embeddings in a database with just one package. You are able to vectorize the text, index the text, and then able to search it. You are able to do SQL query with the natural language. You are able to create pipelines. You are able to create workflows and much more. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about Text AI. I'm going to take you through step by step on how to create embeddings, how to create a rag based application, pipeline and workflow. But before that, I regularly create videos in regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. So to run Text AI, first we are going to create a Conda environment, Conda create hyphen n, txt AI, Python equals 3.11 and then click enter. Next, conda activate txt AI and click enter. Next, pip install txt AI. I'm giving all because we'll be trying many of the features in this tutorial. And I'm adding few other packages which will support our example. Then click enter. Now it's installing. Once that is installed, create a file called app.py and then let's open it. Inside the file, from text AI, import embeddings. Next, we are going to provide some sample data for indexing, data equals, and then providing the list. This is the data which we are going to embed and then index. Next, embeddings equals embeddings and then path equals. We are using sentence transformer NLI MPNet base version 2. Next, embeddings dot index data. This will automatically index the data. Now we are going to do semantic search and try two different queries feel good story and climate change. So this is going to search the embeddings data for these topics. So for example, feel good story. Among this data, winning lottery ticket is a feel good story. In regards to climate change, the last fully intact ice shelf could be one. So now we are going to try and see how the semantic search is working. In your terminal, Python app.py and then click enter. Now it is running and you can see the result here. The feel good story is winning the lottery tickets and the climate change is the last fully intact ice shelf. So now it is able to semantically search and return the result based on that. Next we are going to see how we can update the embeddings and then delete embeddings. So I'm going to make a copy U data and going to search for the embeddings. This is just for our reference. Before update, this is how our embedding search will be like. Now I'm going to update the data add this data into embeddings using dot upsert function. Now I'm going to search the embeddings again and print out the result. Now we're going to run this and see in your terminal python app.py and then click enter. So this is the result before updating the index. Winning lottery ticket is a feel good story. After update baby panda born. It's a much better feel good story than winning a lottery ticket. So we can even delete a record by using dot delete function and going to search the embeddings and print the result after deleting the index which we have just added. I'm going to run the code again and here is the result. After delete, it went back to the previous story. Now we have seen how to do semantic search and then updating and delete embeddings. Next we are going to see how to save the embeddings. So before saving the index, I'm just trying to print out the result to get an understanding. Then we are going to save the embeddings using dot save function. Now we are resetting the embeddings just for our testing. Then we are loading back the saved index again using dot load function. Now we're going to print the results after loading the index. Now let's run the code python app.py and then click enter. And here is our saving results. Before saving the index, this was our data. Then we reset the index. Then we loaded back the index and then ran again and we got the same result, which confirms that we are able to save the index and reload the index whenever required. Next, we're going to see how we can do keyword search and dense vector index in text AI. So we are creating embeddings and saying content equals true and providing the index. So we are having two index. One is the keyword index and then dense vector index. 
So keywords are just like a keyword search in the database or in the embeddings. Dense is another indexing method and each index mechanism is used for a specific purpose. Now embeddings.index.data to index the data. Then we are doing embedding search and mentioning that the index is keyword and similarly embeddings.search index equals dense. As simple as that. You can run different types of index same like this. Just by mentioning the number of indexes you need and then you can use the index type whenever required. Now I'm going to run this code in your terminal python app.py and then click enter. So here is the output keyword and dense index search results. And when searching for the keyword, we couldn't find any keyword because we didn't use the keyword feel good in any of our data. So you can see an empty data set here and here. And when asked to use dense index, it returned this data. So now we have covered semantic search, keyword search, dense index search, and then we learn how to save the index and then load the index later, add to embeddings and then removing from embeddings. Next, we are going to do hybrid search. This will include sparse index and then dense index. So what is sparse and dense index? So here we can see the difference between sparse vector index and dense vector index. Sparse vector index stores only non-zero elements, but dense vector index stores all elements, including zeros. So main thing we need to note is for what purpose we are going to create an application. So if it's anything regards to text frequency in documents or adjacency matrix in graphs, then you can use sparse vector index. If it's image data or audio signal processing and similar things, you can use dense vector index. So in this hybrid search, the text AI has an inbuilt mechanism to do both together. That's getting best of both the worlds. So I'm going to do the hybrid embedding by mentioning hybrid equals true and providing the path of the embedding model. Next, hybrid embeddings.index to index the data. Next, I'm going to provide two topics to search from the data which we provided initially. That is this list. I'm going to ask public health story and about war. Now I'm going to run this code in your terminal python app.py and then click enter. Now here is the hybrid search results. So when asked public health story, it brings up this result, 5 million confirmed virus cases. And when asked about war, it returned Beijing. Next, I'm going to show how to store large amount of data if you got thousands. So I'm going to create content embeddings where you are mentioning content equals true. This will automatically embed your data and save it in a database. The indexing is same as before and you can do the embedding search and able to print the results. Next, we are going to create embeddings with graph index. So embeddings equals embeddings and you're providing the path. Next, you're providing content equals true. Then you're providing functions equals with the list name graph and the function graph dot attribute. Next, providing expressions with the name category and topic. So it's like topical modeling and finally providing the graph with different categories. By providing this, Text AI will automatically categorize all your data in these topics. And finally, we are closing the bracket. So it's just providing functions, expressions, and then graph. All other things will be the same. So it's embeddings.index data. I'm going to print graph search results for our reference and then print embeddings.search. Select topic category text from text AI. You can see this is like a SQL query, which you can perform against your embeddings which are just graph data. Now let's run this code. Now we got the graph embedding result. Let's look that closely. So you can see it got automatically categorized. For example, world politics, it's about US and category health and ice shelf has suddenly collapsed. Again, world politics and it's about Beijing. So now we have automatically categorized using graph search. Next, we're going to see using LLM. First, we are importing torch and then text AI pipeline import LLM. Next, LLM equals and we are providing the large language model name and we are asking a question, which is one place you would go in Washington DC and then passing that to LLM function and finally printing out the results. I'm going to run this and here is the answer. Where is the one place you would go in Washington DC? It's National Museum of American History. That is the response from the large language model. 
Next, we are going to try two things. One is creating a RAG based application using pipeline and then creating workflows. I've already covered the basics of RAG in a completely separate video, which I will link that in the description below. So in this, I'm going to import extractor from textai.pipeline. This is the inbuilt tool which you have in text AI to do the RAG process. So creating embeddings is same. LM embeddings equals embeddings. And then you're mentioning the embeddings. LM embeddings equals embeddings. And then you're mentioning the embedding model. Content equals true and auto ID. And then you're indexing the data. Next, we are going to mention extractor where you provide the embeddings and also the large language model name. Next, we are mentioning the LM query. What country is having issues with climate change from the data provided? Next, providing the context. So in this, we are pausing the question and providing the context. So as you have known, RAG is nothing but providing the context and the question together to the large language model. Finally, we are using extractor and then passing through the context and the question. That's it. With just few lines of code, we created a RAG based application. Now I'm going to run this code and we got the answer here, which is Canada based on the data, which we provided earlier, Canada. And finally, we are going to do language model workflows from text AI import application. Next, I'm creating an application with embeddings.yml. So the embeddings.yml file looks like this. So here we are mentioning the path to the embedding model and we are listing the number of functions which we want to trigger and the workflow. So this will automatically translate the input text into French. So here we have imported embeddings.yaml. Now we are adding the data and indexing it. So we are going through each and every data from the list which we provided earlier and then finally indexing it. Finally, we are executing the workflow by using the SQL query, select text from text AI, where similar feel good story and limit equals one. That means it will give only one result. One more search we are going to do that is app.search and we are going to select translation txt comma ta. That means the input text will be translated to Tamil and it prints out the result. So in this we're using the workflow and in this we are using app.search. In the app.workflow, we are using the workflow mentioned in the embeddings.yaml file. In app.search, we are hard coding that function while sending the request. Now I'm going to run this code. In your terminal, python app.py and then click enter. And here's the final output. Using app.workflow, we translated the returned embedding into French. And using app.search, we translated the returned embedding into Tamil language. As simple as that. I've combined multiple separate tutorial into one file. You can try this one by one using this full list of functions and code. You are able to create more advanced application. This is just to show you that text AI is all in one embedding solution for your application needs. I'm going to create more videos similar to this. So stay tuned. I hope you like this video. Do like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.